Okay, we are back. I am going to continue on where we left off. It looks like we had a plot of the cars, cars data set that comes included. So if I hit the little play button on the, on the right hand side here, you'll see that our cars will be plotted down here because it says plot the cars. Enough about this. Let's talk about saving our file now. This is an RMD file, an R markdown or a notebook file. So we want to actually see what this is going to look like if we were to publish it to, say, a website. Up here, you're going to see where it says preview. We can click on the preview button and it's going to ask us to save it first. So let's save this as um, test one and we're just going to uh, pick a spot for it. I have it in my directory called testin, which is my project directory. It's important to know that everything in your project directory is relatively easy to access within your environment. So save that as test one and it's rendering now and it's going to create a preview for me, I believe. Um, you will see down here I have test1.nb.html. So if I go to my finder window and I go to my testin area, you will see that I also have test1.rmd. We just saved that file. test1.nb.html. Don't worry about that .nb. That just stands for .notebook. And we have our project file. We can open up this HTML file, which I'll do here. So this is an HTML file that's on my, my desktop or on my hard drive. And as you see, it has a title, our notebook, and it has some text. But then it has this gray area. That's our actual R code. And if I click on hide here, um, you can actually hide the code. And up here on the very top right, we have a global hide. Show all code or hide all code. Or you can download this RMD file. Wow, that's pretty awesome. If I download this RMD file, I can send it to my friends and literally they can hit the run button and it'll run exactly the same way. So that's called um, repeat reproducibility and that's very important within data science and any programming in general. So as you can see it's kind of laid out um, there's nothing fancy here but let's go back let's close this out and we're gonna go back to our, our studio and I'm gonna show you how to do a couple things in here. Let's highlight line six through nine and just delete it and we're going to type in our own uh, text this is exploratory analysis using r and r markdown language okay now we saw the title was r notebook let's change that title and like let's let's just put it as um our test whatever we want to do it and we have output as html notebook but that's not extremely important at this point so what we want to do is we want to, um, let's go ahead and change lines uh, 13 through 17 as well and just say something like this is the end and then if we hit preview on that this is an actual preview as you can see it says this is the end this is in our test work everything worked this is not an HTML file so to speak right now this is within our studio it's saying, hey, if this was an HTML file, this is what it would look like. So to generate the file itself, there's a couple different ways. You can click on this little down arrow here, and you can type in knit to HTML. And if you click on that, it will actually render knit it, and it's going to populate our HTML file. So if we go back to our file, which is also over here on the bottom right, which I described as our filing cabinets, if I go to test1.html. Notice now how it's test1.html and not test1.notebook.html. Slight difference. So if I click on that and I go to open in browser, view in web browser, it'll again populate and it's going to look just like this. Okay. So as you can see here, there's no code because we rendered it in as HTML file. So notice the slight differences. Now if I want to knit it to a PDF, you can do that or Word. Um, so instead of doing all the knitting, I can, what I can do is I can run this entire file by clicking on this run here and do run all, which is down at the bottom. And when I do that, that'll update my notebook file. So there's a notebook HTML file and there's a uh, test1.html which has no code. So let's go ahead and open up our notebook, which is right here, view in web browser. And I'll drag that over for us. Here we go. 
So see the difference between notebook and regular HTML. Now there's parameters you can set to make all of these things uh, kind of interchangeable. Like I can add code to the HTML if I wanted to. I can make it so the code doesn't show up automatically. There's all kinds of parameters we'll get into. But I just wanted to show you how to do this. Um, so again, you have show all code and you have hide all code. So no matter where you have, you can have this as a presentable um, published document for your supervision or for your team, whatever you want to do. Okay, so that's it. Now there's a couple quick things I want to add to our markdown. Remember that our markdown is anywhere that's not between these back ticks or at the very top metadata portion. So let's add exploratory and make that into a uh, bold. So highlight the whole thing and there's a little quick shortcut. You can hit the shift eight, which is star. And you see that the star actually showed up on both sides. Just a little quick thing. That's actually italic. If I want to bold, I have to do it again. So let's do it again. Now double. That will end up being bold. You can't see it here, but this is our markdown. Let's say we want to do a list. So we want to double, double space down. And we want to put one star, two spaces. This is important. This, this is actually very subtle, but very important. And we say, this is item one star, two spaces. This is item Two. And then to end this, we're going to do two spaces and say, this is the end of the list. Okay, cool. Let's run that. And what this star space space, and don't forget the space below and above the stars will give us a generated list. Let's take a look at it. And now this is a regular HTML file. You can take this, you can publish it to your WordPress, you can publish it to your website, anything you want to do with it. Okay, so we have, um, uh, let's see, it did not work there. Let's see what we did wrong. I did run all. Knit. Let's see what it looks like in HTML first real quick. So it did happen in our HTML. I'm not sure why. Oh, because you have to save it. I'm sorry. In order to have it render in your notebook, you have to save it. Then it should be in your notebook. Yeah, there's all kinds of little things that you're going to run into, so don't sweat it. It happens to everybody. Learn Stack Overflow. So here it is. Here's our actual notebook file. Once you save it, the notebook will be updated when you run it, or you run it, then save it, one or the other. Okay? So it's in both of our HTML and our nb.html file. That's it for today. I'm going to go to the 4th of July celebrations, so I will put this up and hopefully add another one for Monday. I hope you find these videos to be of value to you. And if you do, check out some of the links in the descriptions. Especially want to give a shout out to TubeBuddy, which is a Chrome extension that helps you tag, create descriptions, titles, end screens, info boxes for, your, for all of your YouTube videos. Uh, quick shout out to them for sure. Check them out below and I'll see you in the next video.